In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a multi-branch pipeline in Cloud BCI using Bitbucket Cloud. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. You may have seen some of the other videos that I've done when we were creating multi-branch jobs using GitHub. In today's video, as we've already said, we're going to be connecting to Bitbucket Cloud. Now, you might not be using Bitbucket Cloud, you might be using Bitbucket Server. A number of these items that I'm talking about today may apply as well to Bitbucket Server, but there's a good chance it may not. Below this video, there is documentation for both Bitbucket Cloud and Bitbucket Server. So if you are using Bitbucket Server, be sure to refer to the documentation in case something looks different when you're going through your setup. Now here is my starting point for today. I have a Cloud BCI client controller at version 2.263.4.2. When it was installed, I selected Install Suggested Plugins. I have an agent connected to this controller that has a label of Linux. And I also have a tunnel set up where I'm using ngrok to be able to proxy my webhooks from Bitbucket Cloud into my controller. In order to create a Bitbucket multi-branch pipeline branch source, I had to install a new plugin. And that plugin is called, not surprisingly, Bitbucket Branch Source. And just so you can see what it looks like, it is already installed. And if we take a look at it, it is the Bitbucket Branch Source plugin. This is the only plugin that I selected when I installed the plugin. And then any of the dependencies came along with it. There are numerous Bitbucket plugins available. In order to do what you're going to see today, you will have to install the Bitbucket branch source plugin. Finally, let's review our starting repository. Here I am inside of Bitbucket Cloud, and I have set up a multi-branch sample app repository. And you will notice here that there is no Jenkins file in the root of the repository. That will become more clear in a few moments. To get started, we need to set up an app password inside of Bitbucket. So we'll be able to create a credential over in Cloud BCI to connect to Bitbucket Cloud. So I'm going to go into my settings to create the app password. We're going to create app password. For the label, I'm going to give it a label of cbci-bitbucket-darren-pope. Now you might ask, okay, why are you being so specific about this, Darren? What, what does it matter? It, it doesn't really matter. But it may help a little bit as you go through your setup. Once we get over to our CI client controller, this label that we're setting up right now is going to be the ID of the credential over inside of our controller. Now we need to set up three permissions on this app password, and really only two. You'll see why in a moment. First, I'm going to select read pull requests. You'll notice that the read for repositories automatically checked off. This is the reason why I said three, but really only two. And in case you didn't catch that, watch repositories. I'm going to uncheck pull request. And now I'm going to check pull request. And you can see that the repository read also was checked off. I'm also going to allow my controller to manage my webhooks for me. That way I don't have to create webhooks manually on my repository. So I'm also going to select webhooks read and write. So there are three permissions that we need but only two that we have to check off because of a dependency between two of the permissions. We select pull request read, which automatically also checks repositories read for us. 
And then I also have checked webhooks read and write. So let's go ahead and click on create. And after create, it will give you a new app password. I am going to copy this and make a note of it over in my notes so I don't lose it. Let's go over to our controller and create the credential using this password. So we'll go over to our controller, dashboard, manage Jenkins, manage credentials, global. We're going to add a credential. It is going to be of type username and password. The username is going to be my username at Bitbucket. So it's just Darren Pope. The password is going to be the app password that was just created. And the ID and the description are going to be the label. So I can look at the label and I can visually see, oh, this is the same one over inside of my controller. Click on OK. So now we have our app password set up on Bitbucket Cloud. We've taken that set of credentials, created a credential over in our controller, and now we're ready to do one more thing. We need to set up our Bitbucket endpoint. So we'll go to Manage Jenkins, Configure System. We are going to scroll down. And on our way down, I'm actually going to go ahead and copy Jenkins URL. You'll see why in a minute. We're going to go down to Bitbucket Endpoints. By default, Bitbucket Cloud has already been created for us. If you are using Bitbucket Server and not using Bitbucket Cloud, what you would do is you would delete Bitbucket Cloud and add Bitbucket Server and go through and set up the Bitbucket Server. But since I am using Bitbucket Cloud, I have Bitbucket Cloud selected. I'm going to select Manage Hooks, and it scrolls down. Let's scroll back up. I select Manage Hooks. The credentials are going to be the credentials that we just created that have the app password in it. And then the custom Jenkins root URL is going to be our Jenkins URL that we copied as we were scrolling down. Let's go ahead and click on Save. So let's recap. We have a repository at Bitbucket Cloud. We've set up an app password at Bitbucket Cloud. We took the app password and created a credential inside of our controller. And then we took that credential and we used it in our manage hooks configuration for Bitbucket endpoint. So now, in theory, if everything's working, we should be able to go ahead and create our multi-branch job. So let's do that. Let's click on new item. We are going to do multi-branch sample app. Let's scroll down to the bottom and select multi-branch pipeline. Remember that I said, and we will review it real quick, we do not have a Jenkins file inside of our repository at root. So before I create the branch source, at this point, we're looking for a Jenkins file named Jenkins file. We're not going to create the Jenkins file just yet, so we should be able to go ahead, set up our job. The job should create, but it won't find the Jenkins file, so therefore no branches will be found to be able to create a job from. That's okay. So add source, Bitbucket, Bitbucket server, or Bitbucket, the server option, just Bitbucket cloud. This Bitbucket cloud maps back to the Bitbucket endpoints that we just set up. The credential is Darren Pope. My owner is Darren Pope. And as I tab out of this field, watch what happens inside of repository name. It found multi-branch sample app. Since we have the credentials set up, it's able to authenticate and get back a list of repositories. 
Now, right now, that is the only repository that I have with under this owner. We're not going to make any changes to our default behaviors, which are discover branches and discover pull requests, both from origin and from forks. And as we've already mentioned, we're going to be looking for a Jenkins file in the root of the repository, which at the moment, one does not exist. Let's see what happens. So we click on save. It scans the repository. It found the branch, but there was no Jenkins file found. There were no pull requests found. So when we take a look at this now, the folder is empty. The job is legitimate, but the folder is empty. Let's go over to our repository, click on repository settings, and then webhooks. And what you'll see here is that the hook is already set up for us for 11074. So the hook is being managed from our controller back to Bitbucket Cloud. So from this point forward, any changes that we make within the repository should be sending hooks to our controller and things should just start happening within our controller. Okay, let's go back here and let's go ahead and add a starting point of a Jenkins file. So my Jenkins file is there and let me grab a Jenkins file to start with. This Jenkins file, if you've watched any of the other videos, Pretty much the same starting point. Declarative pipeline, I've got an agent of label Linux, a couple of options, and the, then just a single hello stage that just echoes out hello. Let's click on commit and then commit one more time. We can see here that we committed directly to the main branch. And here's the Jenkins file that we just added. We can look in the root of our repository and still see our Jenkins file. Whoops, guess what? I messed up. I named it Jink. Well, let's fix that. Edit. That was silly. How did I do that? Okay, you know what? This is why we do these things. I cannot rename here. Let's cancel out of that. Rename, there we go. Jenkins file. You were probably watching that and saw that happen. So this is how we're going to fix it. Jenkins file. It's a rename. Okay, now we're good. So now if we take a look, now we have our Jenkins file in our repository. Let's go over and take a look at our controller. I'll click on multi-branch sample app just to refresh this. The main branch was found. We can see that this is building right now based off of a branch event. And in just a moment, we should see as it goes through here that we have our hello show up. So what we have now is a multi-branch job. It found a main branch with a Jenkins file at the root and therefore a main job was created. Okay, so now that we have our main branch, let's go create a new branch off of main so we can sort of fix things. So let's go here, we'll go ahead and do a get pull. Okay, so, yep, there's the get pull. And then let's do a get checkout dash B fix dash 123. So now we have a new branch for fix 123. And then let's go ahead and push this branch up to our repository. And just to confirm that, we'll come back over here. I'm going to click on main. And we can see now that I have a main and a fix 123 and that's it for right now. Let's go back into our controller, refresh this, and we can see that we have a fix123 job here as well. And since it was just branched off of main, 
the output from this job run is exactly the same as what we saw within our main branch. We just see hello. Okay, all of that's looking good. Let's make a change to our fixed branch. So we are still on our fixed branch here. Let's edit our Jenkins file. We're going to add in two new stages, if I can find them. There we go. We're adding, adding in two stages, one that is specific for branches that start with fix dash. And we're also adding in a stage to get us ready for our pull request. So anything that starts with PR dash will use this stage. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's add the change. Chickens file and get push. So we created a change to our Jenkins file. We've now pushed it up to fix 123. If we refresh this, we'll see that the fix 123 branch is running. By the time we get here, it's complete. Happen via a branch event. Here's our hello for the fix branch. Since this is a fix dash branch, we catted out the readme. And then we also skipped the PR because this is not a PR branch. Because remember, a pull request is effectively a branch. So we have main, we have fix 123. Now let's go ahead and merge in fix 123 into our main branch using a pull request. Okay, to get started on creating the pull request, Let's go back over to our repository, click on pull request. Let's create a pull request. And we're going to start with fix 123. And we're going to merge it, arrow going right, into main. I'm checking the fix 123 box because I want this branch removed as soon as the merge is completed. So let's go ahead and click on create pull request. Once the pull request is created, we're not going to close it yet. Or we're not going to automatically merge it. We're going to get there in just a minute. Here are the two stages that we just added. Let's go back over to our controller and see what's going on. We still have main and fix, but now we have a pull request, and it's PR-4. So if we take a look at PR-4 and its console output, we will see hello. We can see that the fix branch was skipped, and then the PR stage ran because this started with PR-. dash. So we have jobs for both fix123, for main, and for our PR. Let's go ahead and merge our PR. And just for clarity, I will go ahead and approve, although not necessary, and then I'm going to click on merge. We have a chance to review this. Our source is fix123. Our destination is main, and we are closing our source branch. Let's click on Merge. As the merge completes, let's go take a look at our job. And what you're going to see here is that main is currently running. Fix is now obsolete, as indicated by the strike through. The pull request is now obsolete, again, as indicated by the strike through. And now main is complete. Let's take a look at main real quick. So the output for main now shows hello, as expected, 
and that both the fix branch and the PR branch stages were skipped because the wind conditionals did not match against the branch main. Okay. And just for clarification, in case we don't want to see these obsolete branches just sitting around, we can force clean those by clicking on Scan Multibranch Now. And then I'm going to click on Multibranch Sample App just to refresh the page, and we can see the only thing that's left now is Main, and Pull Request is now empty. One thing you may have noticed, through this Multibranch job, using the Bitbucket branch source type, is we have this Tag tab here. We haven't created a tag yet. Let's do that so you can see how this works. What we're going to do is flip back over to my shell. I'm going to do a get pull. Oh, wait. Let's go back over to main because fix123 doesn't exist anymore. Let's pull that. Okay. So now main is up to date. I'm also going to go ahead and get rid of my fix123 branch because it no longer exists. And let's clear this out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to create a tag off of our main branch. And then we are going to push the tag up to Bitbucket. Now, before I push this up, Let's go back over and take a look at Bitbucket. We'll click on the repo here. If we click on main, the only branch we have is main. If I click on tags, there are no tags in this repository. Okay, exactly what we want. Let's hit enter. Let's flip back over to our repository. I'll click on branches again. We have main. And if I click on tags, now we have v1.0. So now we have a tag that exists within our repository. Let's go back over to our controller and see what happened. So let's refresh this page. And you'll notice that tags still has nothing listed in it. Why is that? This is actually a very simple thing. It goes back to what we talked about when we first set up our job. Let's go to configure. And let's look at the behaviors of our Bitbucket configuration. We have a Discover Branches, and we have a Discover Pull Requests. Actually, two of them, one from Origin and one from Forks. What we don't have is a Discover from Tags. So let's add that in. By default, Discover Tags is not enabled. If you don't need your tags, it's not, they're, ne they're never going to show up. So that's that for you, that may be great. But for those of you that do want to be able to see your tags here, you would have to go in and add this behavior, discover tags. Let's go ahead and click on save. And you can notice in the scan that we found a Jenkins file on our main branch. That's all good. It was looking up pull request. No current pull request right now. And then we're looking up for tags. Well, we found a tag. It has a Jenkins file on it. And there was no automatic build triggered for 1.0. So let's go back over to our job and take a look at what's going on. We can see main is still here. Nothing in pull request, but now we have a 1 in tags. And we can see the name of it is v1.0, the same as the tag name that we created. And it did not automatically build. Now this is up to you. Do you want to build it or not? Let's go ahead and click on Build Now and see what happens. Taking a look at the console output, we have our hello, and we have our two stages both being skipped because the tag doesn't match on either fix dash or PR dash. What if we do want to have a Jenkins file living outside of our application repository because that Jenkins file needs to be used across multiple repositories. With Cloud BCI, there is a concept called marker files that makes this possible. So to get started, we're going to go back over to our repository, 
and we are going to remove our Jenkins file from the repository. So Jenkins file, delete, delete. And we're just removing it. So right now, there is no Jenkins file in the repository. Since our webhooks are set up, when we go back over to our job, what we are going to see here is that main is now obsolete. Let's go ahead and scan this to clean it up. We can see right now there are no jobs associated with multi-branch sample app because there is no Jenkins file in our main branch. Let's configure our job. We saw this at the beginning. Underneath branch source, we have build configuration. Let's change our build configuration from by Jenkins file to custom script. And this concept of a marker file is if I find file X, in this case, if I find marker file X, then go and run this pipeline. And you have two choices. You can either do it by pipeline script and embedded, not a recommendation, or B, pipeline script from SEM. That is the recommendation, which is what we're going to show you how to do. Now, if you take a look at our repository, we don't have a file named X. But since this is a Gradle-based project, we do have a build.gradle. So let's use build.gradle as our marker file. So if I find build.gradle, does not matter what the contents of build.gradle is, it just matters that it exists. So if I find, when I find build.gradle, then I am going to run a pipeline script from an SCM. And in this case, I have a repository that I'm going to use. We're going to change the SCM to git. I'm pasting in the repository URL. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and open it up here as well. So this is a Jenkins file library. Funny enough, hosted on GitHub since we've been talking Bitbucket this whole time. And what we're going to use is this Jenkins file basic. That's just sort of our starting point here. So if you wanted to check this out, all the links for these are down below in the description. Let's go back over here. This is a public repository, so there are no credentials needed. The branches to build from, meaning where it is, well, in my case, this repository has a master branch, so I'm wanting to pull from master. And the script path that I want to use, instead of it just being Jenkins file, even though I do have a Jenkins file here, the real file that I want to use is Jenkins file dash basic. Because Jenkins file dash basic has agent label Linux and just a couple of steps, uname dash a and java dash version. So I'm going to say Jenkins file dash basic. So let's go through this again. We change from by Jenkins file to custom script. We set our marker file to build.gradle because we've decided if I find build.gradle, I want to use a pipeline script from SCM. I've specified what repository that I want to use and which script that I want to use, in this case, Jenkins file dash basic. So let's go ahead and click on save. As it scans, we're going to see that under multi-branch sample app, the main branch was found again. Let's click into it and take a look at the output. We can see that the uname a ran and the java version ran. So if I had another repository that needed to use this same Jenkins file, I would not have to copy the Jenkins files 
from repository to repository and have a real problem maintaining that Jenkins file over time. By using a marker file, it gives me the ability to have a centralized Jenkins file, and then I can maintain that in one place. Anytime changes are made to that Jenkins file, they will be picked up when that job runs the next time. And that's it. That's how you connect a repository hosted in Bitbucket Cloud to a CloudBee CI controller using a multi-branch pipeline job type. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees Devs. If this video was helpful to you, please consider giving us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there is brand new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.